it's good to be back at it here again. Took a little break for 4th of July festivities. Got all my fingers on this hand. Anyway, we are working on a Keystone Montana this week. Got a whole bunch of panels, just got dropped off. Uh, 24 volt system, a little bit interesting. You're definitely gonna wanna check this one out. So inside this bay here, we are uh, doing four of these batteries. These are 12 volt batteries, yes, in a 24 volt system. Uh, what are these called, the Vapors, the Vipers? I don't know, exactly. A uh, customer bought these and he had been running two of them in the system as a 12 volt system, but um, yeah, we're gonna do the 24. And the way we're gonna, well, you know, we'll get into exactly how we're gonna take care of that later. Just, we're just overviewing what we're doing right now. So we're gonna have four of those batteries in here. We got two more right here. Uh, big board back here with all the Victron stuff. JD's working on that. I will show you that here in a second. Uh, I've been working on running our AC lines and the HDMI and USB for Serbo. You know we're doing that. Uh, oh, we're also doing, got some uh, six gauge wires ran here for an Anderson connector that we are going to connect here for the trailer charging. We've been finding some problems with the Ford. See, I even drive a Ford. Uh, with the Ford trucks, but a lot of trucks, they're just really picky on when they want to charge from the seven pin. So customer's going to manage uh, getting a Anderson connector on one end of the truck and we're going to manage here. And then we're going to run directly to the charger, the Orion charger and do uh, tow vehicle charging that way. So here we got and here where we've opened up the this giant pass-through bay. Look at this, this is just ginormous. And uh, solar, the pre-wire for solar is back there. I did find those. In here, I've been, you can tell I've been out hard at work. We got the AC connections run. And I just wanna comment on this Keystone Montana here that this is probably the best looking panel I have seen. I'm really impressed with this RV in general, gotta say. Got our uh, aluminum splices here for the shore input power. And then we run the output of the inverter into the panel. That's the way that works. You can see way back there, we had to make a hole in the cabinet. And that's a whole giant empty space there. You could use that for more storage. On the other side here, I'll show you what that looks like here, but anyway, put that hole there to run the HDMI and USB for the servo. Let's take a look at that. That's looking pretty cool right there. And this customer also has this micro air Wi-Fi thermostat that I'm actually looking at upgrading to in my own RV. So I'm interested to play around with that. But oh, yeah, check this out. This is all empty space down there. If uh, we were set up more for carpentry, I would maybe start offering re... Like, I'm sure they could use this space. It's there. <sighs> so anyway, we're getting that going. And we got Austin here. A new, new player has entered the channel. Austin's working on doing panel brackets that's uh one of my other sons he's already got one done we've got 12 of these to do it's gonna be good 24 volt panels we can get into why we do that but we got 12 of those let's see what jd's up to here got a mega board it is good size so what do we got going on here We've got, uh, so we're gonna have our multi plus 24 volt 3000 sitting mm -hmm. right here with optional room for expansion. You can throw another guy right here if the customer wants in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, running cable tray up over there, over here. And then also optional, we're leaving a space for a second Lynx distributor right here. If he adds a second multi plus, you would need for sure a second Lynx distributor. But this one mm -hmm. is gonna be sitting right here. Uh, servo down here. The 
Blue Solar MPP T150 70. Mm -hmm. And then what's what's this one for again? Uh oh, there he wants to have uh, some capability oh, for ground deploy. Ground deploy, that's right. So this yep. will be if necessary. Was that on an Anderson connector? Uh no, or, we'll we'll probably just do MC4s. It's still okay. The Anderson is going to the Oh, to the, the Orion. Okay, that's right. Orion right here, and then we also have another Orion that is a 24 to 12. Oh, uh, yep. That has that is arriving today. We are taking just in time uh, inventory yeah. management to the extreme. <laughs> and uh, the other thing we haven't put on here yet is this little guy. I used to run one of these when I ran a battery bank, 24 volts, but using 12 volt batteries. This is important to keep the battery bank in balance. Each of the 12 volt batteries need to be managed individually. And so we're gonna use this guy to do that. And we will, we'll go into more detail once we get the battery situation sorted. Yeah. But yeah, that's a nice big board. It'll do the trick. We're trying out a little different fabric in here. Boy, JD did a great job on the corners. Look at that. Oh, thanks. Looks, it's a thing of beauty. That's what I'm just gonna start doing next is just gonna be JD's carpeting. <laughs> JD's carpet. Why not? Not like it. Yeah, why not? If things go south with the solar, you know, and be like, I'm sorry, I just do carpet <sighs> now. Oh. <laughs> things are not going so south with the no, solar. No. We are actually it's busy. Yeah, we are trying to get back to everyone. So if you've contacted us and you're watching this video and we haven't gotten back to you, I'm sorry. We're we're gonna get back to you as soon as we can. But for right now, that is our priority. And when this settles down, I'm gonna be on the phone calling people back like crazy. So, but don't don't stop calling because um, we can't necessarily help everybody, but we do like to try. All right, what else have we got here? Anything or mm, maybe you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna tease something here real quick, JD, if you don't mind. Oh yeah, have fun with that. Yeah, this is we're not gonna get into too much with this, but all I can say is that's a multi plus three thousand. This is a multi plus ten thousand. And it's for that guy right there. It's his. I'm excited for it. Yeah, uh, it's it's pretty crazy what he's gonna try and do with it. Uh, try. There, there's no try. <laughs> there's no happen. try. There's only do. It's gonna happen. Of course. Uh, definitely subscribe if you want to see what happens with that. I I think JD's got it. I think it's gonna work out good, but it's a little weird. And if you're watching this channel, you gotta like weird because we're all a little weird, right, JD? Huh? <laughs> so Austin did a great job. He got the brackets on all the panels. We got them up here. And this is the layout we're thinking about doing. This is going to be a 3S 4P. At least that's the way I think about it. Three, three panels in series. And we're doing that four times. So the way it's gonna go, let's walk between here. The way it's gonna go is one, two, three. One, two, three three all on this side then one two three one two three and we'll group all those together usually i'll do group all of them on one side together group the other this side together and then i have just two two wires coming across and our port actually is it's under one of these two panels the jaboni port and uh it doesn't touch the bottom of the panel so that'll be really nice uh, no really risk of water intrusion. But the other thing I wanted to mention was we put this panel here and there's plenty of room to put it here or here. But the reason why I'm putting it here is because this way I avoid any self shading from the air conditioner. And that's gonna let this group of three panels work a lot better. And uh, we will have problems up there, but that's just the way it is. We're trying to Try to make better decisions when we can and where we can. And then we're leaving these open here so the customer can get here to clean off their slides. Uh, that was a request that he made, so we're making it happen. It actually hasn't been terribly hot, but uh, we got birthday dinner for Levi tonight, so we're gonna go do that. And then I think maybe this evening might uh, start wiring these up and screwing them down because I don't like working in the heat out here. Let's go downstairs, or downstairs. Well, there are stairs there. Let's go down, check on the front and what JD's getting into in the shop. So over here, 
we've got uh, our batteries in and generally wired up in their configuration. Put some foam padding underneath it. And we're also doing heaters in here. I got a heater in between, in between, and then on the bottom. And we're gonna wire all those together and wire them into a switch and of course fuse that. We don't have anything up here yet, of course. Uh, but let's talk about the way we're wiring up these these batteries here real quick. And what we have going is, so we got a negative, negative, right? Uh, positive to negative to get to our 24 volt series voltage. And doing the same thing over there. And then the entire groups are paralleled. What may be confusing to some of you is, what is this wire here? What is it doing? Well, this is the midpoint. Victron actually recommends this. It is, uh, it helps balance the middle of the two batteries. Basically it puts uh, the bottom part of the battery, which is here and here also in parallel so that they work together. Otherwise uh, they can get out of balance a lot easier. And then we're gonna add the battery balancer to it. And that is going to help kind of basically it cooks off amps on the top on the top side or the bottom side but it only removes amps it does not push amps around um, and then the other thing we're going to do is with the shunt it has a auxiliary input we're going to connect that to one of the midpoints and that will track how far off if at all the midpoints are getting and that's going to let the customer know basically what's the health of the battery bank because sometimes they can get out of balance and we want to avoid that. So we're just taking all the steps we can to make that happen. And I haven't done the measurement here, but it does look like there might be room for two more if they want to make that happen. And to do that, then they would just extend another jumper from the midpoint over to the next one. So this one's been a little bit different because uh, we, you didn't see this before because it, it didn't show up quite yet. And we're still actually waiting on one part, but Hopefully it'll be here shortly. In the next hour? Maybe. Or, you know, we'll just take care of it tomorrow. And uh, anyway, JD's been, he's been standing here for about the last eight hours. I'm landing, I think this might be the last wire. All right. That we got before we put this in. So, it's all wired up nicely. Going good. All right. Yeah. And this is something also we wanna maybe point out, JD, brought this to my attention initially, which was the uh, the way the connectors look here. It almost looks like it's the positive has this plate here, but the negative doesn't. And that threw us off initially. But we looked at the reference photos online and they seem to match. So I guess that's normal, but we hadn't really looked at those all that closely before. It seems strange for it to be normal, but. Yeah. All right, well, we are about wrapping up today. And uh, JD doesn't like sushi, so he's not coming out. Sushi, sushi, sushi. sushi. No. JD says he he likes his fish cooked, so yes. we're going going out for sushi tonight. Ah, new day dawns on this Keystone, Montana. Really like the build on these. We've got our board finally put in. Let's do a quick update on that. Got the multi plus sitting there. We've got our our main connections coming out here. All the cables in the raceway. There is a lot of cables here. And uh, yeah, we're making it work here. Got the solar disconnects. Here's our battery balancer. We're gonna get all that wired up here in a little bit, but it's getting a little warm out. So we are gonna get to the solar up on top before it gets too hot. Go check in on both JD and I got these, I don't know, long sleeve fishing solar shirts. Yeah, we got these from, the idea was from Bruce, the RV medic, and boy do they work when it's hot. Yeah. They got a little hood. I'll nice. show you around. I got mine here too, see? We're gonna get up on top there. All right, if anyone wanted to know, what 2,400 watts of solar on an RV looks like, this is it. Getting this done up here. JD's got all the panels screwed down. We tested tested the connections, obviously, before that. 
and everything's looking good. So it's a little, a little bit cloudy, kind of partial cloud. Oh, now, now I bet that's making some power. We'll uh, go down, go down and review what we got going on there. Oh, the other thing, sorry, before we go downstairs, the other thing I wanted to mention is JD and I were thinking we could fit three more. So we figure our theoretical max is at 15 panels, 3000 watts on a rig like this. The reason why we couldn't in this case was we had to give a little bit of room there and there. Customer wanted to be able to sweep off the slide out awnings. Well, we might, uh, it'd be tight, we might be able to get through. Yeah, even, even as is, it's possible. Yeah. It's possible, potentially. And for sure, you could probably fit even more if you were okay with going to smaller size panels, like maybe a bunch of 50 watts. You could you could get creative and start jigsawing them together. So far, we haven't done more than 2,400 watts. We're looking for, who's it gonna be? Who is gonna be the one to do more than this? That guy right there. <laughs> I did, yeah, I got 5,600 on there now. Uh, we can run two air conditioners purely oh, off of solar. Purely off of solar. If we... space heater, just for fun. <laughs> no, no. Two air conditioners about maxes us out normally. I've seen as much as 4,400 right now, but that's because I got one charge controller that's undersized. We'll change that here shortly. So here we are at the panel. And right now we're not getting a ton of solar. We just went behind a cloud. And don't be alarmed. That says, that doesn't say 100% or any percentage because I'm waiting for the battery monitor to trigger 100%. But let's, uh, Let's take a look at the battery monitor here real quick. I want to show you something. So we have the midpoint being tracked currently. And so this is the midpoint deviation. And it's off by just a little bit, but that's actually kind of normal under charging. When the battery is charging and a lot of amps are going in, sometimes the deviation will shift and you'll actually see it on the VRM logs. That's just because a little bit of voltage resistance or yeah, a drop in voltage based on resistance and all that, where the the midpoint sense wire has no current going through it, whereas the top uh, sense wire is the main, and that has current. Okay, in here, in the bay, we got that guy working, getting a little warm, it should be. So, here's where the midpoint is connected currently. And so that's just a sense wire here, but the sense wire for the shunt is actually connected here. So the voltage is gonna be a little bit different here than down here. Look in good. I think I'm gonna get a panel on the uh, little ground deploy so we can test that too. Oh, we just got some good sun. Let's go take a look at the power. Come on sun, stay out. Oop. 13. For what we're at, the kind of cloud we got, 13, 14, 15. That's not bad. I know we got 2,400 up there, but. I'm shading them too. Oh, JD's shading them a little bit. Okay. That's making some sense as well. I put some panels on the, uh, on the, ground deploy controller so it's got uh, 240 coming from that but let's take a look here <clears throat> see some people might say well you know we just did a 70 amp charger for those 2400 watts of panels but look we're only we're only at 60 amps 61 amps right now the limiting factor is not the charger it's just conditions all right jd what are you working on here Getting our AC mains hooked up. Yeah. I should be done with this by dinner. Okay. Oh, they're never fun. Why couldn't... Victron, why can't they be uh, screw down terminals? Because that would make sense. So we played around with putting a little crick in those. I think that's what JD's doing right now. Yep. Oh, you do that first? I should just slide them through and then do it, but... Uh, I did it once. It's actually, I've done it both ways. All right. I don't remember if there's one way that's easier or not, actually. Oh no, because I'm stuck there. It'd probably be best if I put him in there after the fact. Before, when you got the tail hanging uh -huh. out, you can like just zigzag it in. Mm. Well, anyway, we're getting those in. And uh, hey, I got my battery balancer installed and running. 
And uh, for anyone concerned or thoughts on this, it only balances at 0.7 amps. So uh, not a lot of currents going through it, but it will help keep things in balance. We will do a uh, top balance uh, manually. We'll get the lab power supply out here to make sure it's all good and healthy before we send it off. But uh, we got some more to do here, some more things to hook up. Almost forgot, we got our trailer charger to, to do here soon. Right there, we gotta pull those through a little bit more and hook those up. Then we'll have an Anderson connector. We're not relying on that wimpy seven pin on this one. No siree, Bob. We're rolling now. Oh, I mean, oh. <laughs> oh, it's oh, down there, down there in the corner. Correctly. Oh, here we go. So we gotta, we take this long screwdriver and jam it up into the release pin, or release hole, sometimes, gets in there. There it is. You pretty much gotta jam it in until you feel like you're gonna break something. Mm-hmm. Then you can take that. Oh, we gotta secure the bottom part of this board still. I just noticed it was moving. Oh, yeah. That might be beneficial. Oh, good grief. Oh, the second one. There. Oh. That was a nice one. More ground. It's always easy. Much easier, but it's also hard to tell because there's no insulation on that true. No, our last one. All right, after a couple minutes of struggling and grunting here, JD's got it done. I think it's. Yep, yeah, that's in. That's not pulling out, no. Yep, so we like to test them all. Yep, that one's good. Grab. And our ground is grabbed. Now, hopefully, we put these in correctly. Otherwise, we're going to take them out. We'll see. Let's <laughs> turn it on and see if sparks fly. <laughs> well, worst case scenario, if we turn it on, so here, here's an easy way to test this. If you turn it on and things inside the coach turn on, then it's good. If nothing turns on, then you have a hot shore power plug. That's true. And that's not the end of the world, as long as you <laughs> rectify it. Yes. So, yeah, let's turn that on and see what happens here. Uh, I don't know if everything's off or on. No, I think everything's on. Nothing? Oh, there it goes. Okay, I was worried there for a little bit. The one breaker I had off down here was the uh, microwave. So, yep. We are good. We are good to go. And then that means we can seal that up. We're gonna start button things up, but I think we're gonna break for lunch here first. Nice job, JD. Thank you. It's in. Oh, and there are, uh, interesting. So our, our battery balancer is starting to work. It's got a little higher voltage on the upper battery. Nothing to be super alarmed about. Let's go take a look inside. Do we have the midpoint monitor to yep. the turbo or to the shunt hooked up? Yeah, that's what we're gonna take a look at right oh, now. Nice. So we're at one, a little over 1% deviation. So we're gonna keep an eye on that. Where it really matters is if the top section gets close to high voltage cutoff on the battery itself, we're gonna to wanna to start feeding the bottom section a little extra juice from a lab power supply just to get it balanced the first time. All right, now, um, we're a little bit further on in the charging process and I'll show you what one thing that we did is uh, these batteries are starting to deviate a little bit more. They actually got up to over 2% deviation. So I put an external charger on the bottom half and uh, it's cleaning that up a little bit. But to keep it in check and to give it a chance of balancing, I'll show you what I did. This is where I like to use DVCC so I enabled that and limited the charge current to nine amps. So, and as it, uh, we'll just keep an eye on that. Basically it limits the entire charging system to that many amps and it lets you really be able to control that. So you're not throwing 50 amps at it and it just blows through the safeties of the BMSs real quick. Now a question some of you may have is, well, why didn't you balance them before you put them in there? And that's certainly something you could do but I find even when you do that, it doesn't take long for them to start getting out of balance. And 
it can potentially take a long time. And as quickly as we do these projects, we don't always have time to, to do that full charge. So what I find even when I'm building a uh, 12 volt or 24 volt or even 48 volt battery banks, what I do is uh, I will charge up the entire bank until one cell or one battery hits high voltage cutoff and then I will balance from there because then 90 to 95% of the charging has been done at the higher voltage and it's much more efficient, much faster. And uh, as well as you get to test all the safeties and just make sure everything's working the way it should be. So here's the next morning and you can see the balancer is doing its job. It kind of clicks on and off. That's how it takes power out of the top or in this case, it's the bottom battery's voltage now. And it's what it's trying to do is pull down yeah, pull down the voltage on the higher cell and let the other one come up a little bit more. But I'm actually thinking about maybe dropping the voltage to 28.8 just to give it a little bit more so we don't get quite the disparity here at top. All right, so I decided to, let's go all the way to 28.5. And what I like about this is that gets the one battery, whichever one is higher at a 2% deviation still within the high voltage threshold for the individual battery. That would be 14.6 or below. Because if you're over 14.6, the battery's just gonna not accept any amps anyway, and it's gonna be really hard to balance something. So we're still, it's still trying to do its balancing job, as you can see it there. But the issue is that there's just, the batteries are almost full. And it's just, there's always gonna be this little bit of deviation at the top and that's just kind of the way it's gonna be and that balancer is gonna do its best job to try and keep it in balance, but it is gonna take a little bit of time to do it. So 28.5 is the voltage I would choose if you're using two 12 volt batteries in series to make a 24 volt battery. But I would actually recommend not doing that. And this is partially why, it's not the end of the world, it works. Um, just something you got to keep an eye on. That's all. But uh, we'll do a quick uh, check in on this before we officially send this project home. But let's get to the uh, wrap up video here. The wrap up segment. Well, good morning, everybody. At least it is here. This is the final walk around and review of everything we've done on this Keystone Montana. Uh, I forget the exact make and model on it, but it's probably in the video description or title. And so you can reference that. It's been a long couple of days working on this. We've had a great time. Let's take a look at some of the the big blue board here first. Uh, Multi Plus 3000, of course. Uh, we did the 70 amp charger and a 30 amp charger for the uh, shore power, or not shore power, for ground deploy solar. Got the trailer charging, and we got that run into an Anderson connector. And again, this is a 24 volt system, so the Orion step down converter. Got something to talk about on that here in a second. Um, got our breaker box for the solar arrays, even labeled them. Got our remote for the LED strip that's up here, providing us some light, motion detector. That's really nice. Got the links all lit up and working properly. And uh, something that's a little interesting is we got the uh, the smart shun here with the midpoint that we've been talking about. That's how that's uh, that data is being measured by that auxiliary port there. We just run that right to the midpoint. Uh, we have battery heaters in here, and uh, this is the switch for that. So that's how we turn on the heaters. And the way we have it is there's a heater pad here, a heater pad here, and then one underneath it as well. So that should keep the batteries warm enough and we're using uh, RV tank heaters for this. So <clears throat> it should, uh, that's what we found that works really well when we're trying to heat the batteries because the problem with self-heating batteries is a couple of things. One, uh, if something goes wrong with that heater, you know, I don't know, some, some, part, well, then it just doesn't work anymore. And I would say the more important thing is you don't have a sense of the state of charge of the batteries when they're self-heating because that is outside of the 
of the uh, battery monitor. If these batteries had internal heaters, this shunt has no idea about what's going on. So your battery's gonna be, be at a very low state of charge and you'll never know it. So when you use external heating, you'll be able to track all that. Uh, of course, got the servo there and the battery balancer doing its job. It's just trying to keep them all in balance. It, the battery is pretty much full, so this is not unusual to have going on. Uh, something else I want to talk about here real quick is we got two wires coming up here, right? And that, and they come out here. Oh, there it is. What we got going on here, let's get a, is uh, an Anderson connector. So the customer can connect the truck directly up to this to charge their tow vehicle, or charge from the tow vehicle. <clears throat> and, they'll, and they're gonna install a, uh, the other side of this Anderson connection, Anderson connection directly to the alternator or battery with popular, popular, geez, I can't even talk today. Proper fusing and or breaker circuit protection. So we like the way that turned out. We might be doing that more often just because trailer charging or tow vehicle charging from the seven pin is finicky. The modern trucks just don't want to send power in a reliable way. Uh, again, up top on solar, we did 2,400 watts. Whew, so we got some morning dew still up here. But uh, so 2,400 watts solar looks real good. But how do you feed that in? What, what kind of size controller do you feed that into? Well, you could use a 100 amp, and that's not a bad way to go. But the 70 amp fits it about perfect. And I'll tell you why, is you, to figure out the amps for a controller, what we do is we take 2400 and we multiply it times 0.8 to get about 80% of the capacity of what we expect this to get. And then we divide that by our nominal voltage, or not our nominal voltage, our charging voltage, which is gonna be somewhere between 26 and 27. And I think when you get to about 27.5, which is a pretty normal charging voltage, you're at about 70, 71 amps, somewhere in there. You can fact check me. That ends up being about 1900, 1950 in watts that you're producing. And true, there's gonna be times way up in the mountains where you might be able to get a little bit more or a really clear cold day, but pretty much other than those for about a month out of the year or a handful of days, a 70 amp charger is gonna be maxing out for these panels. Uh, these panels will be the limiting factor on that charger, not the charger, not the other way around. Jeez, I can't talk today, but we did a great job. I really like this. All right, here we go inside. Uh, a lot of people ask, oh, do we need all the slides out or anything? And no, for the most part, we don't. Where we got to get to is right here. And then we just got to figure out where we're going to put the display in right here. This is how we did that one. And, uh. This one's still trying to do its job to balance out. It's at 1.9, uh, 1.8% 1 .9, 1 deviation. It's working on it, but the battery's 100% full, so there's pretty much no amps flowing anywhere. It's just trying to get fully charged. I do want to mention real quick that we did get to a more balanced state of charge, and you can see here how the balancer is doing its job. So the last thing I wanted to mention in here is I think we're starting to do GUI mods a little bit more. And maybe you can see that that's going on here. Uh, this customer in particular, he requested it, and so we'll do it. We just let him know the risks. Is You get that for choosing, choosing your AC input. It's super simple and easy. You know, you go 10, and these are all customizable. I customized the one, the 20 to 18, because that's a typical little generator that you might use. 18 works really good for that. And then of course you can work it up or down. And then you just hit accept new. And that's the new AC input current limit. It's way easier. Normally you gotta go here, uh, find the multi plus, go here, and then you do it and you can, but if you gotta go to, uh, from here to 50, that's gonna be a pain in the butt. So uh, that's what we did. There's a whole bunch of other things that is available but uh, that's the major thing that he wanted out of it. The other nice thing is it gives you the time to go right away, right here on the battery. 
which is super helpful, but we're charging right now, so that's not gonna show anything. I think that's, uh, that's about all we got to share on here. So from all of us at uh, Soda Solar, myself, Sean, JD, uh, Austin helped out on this one. Uh, wife, Jen, running the books, keeping us legal. And, uh, and thank you to all of you as well for uh, continuing to watch, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. It really, we really appreciate it. Uh, we're just having a blast doing this. So if you need any help uh, working on any of this kind of stuff or uh, you'd like it done to your rig, contact us at sodasolar.com. We'd love to help you out. We are pretty busy, but if we don't get back to you, uh, just <laughs> send a quick friendly note again. Uh, a lot of times when we're working on these, it's like 100% on this. Uh, and then when we're done, I'm gonna be getting back to people today and through the weekend. So be patient with us. We appreciate it. Thanks. Bye.